All right, thanks for joining us. Well, who knows how many we've got on YouTube Live, but anyway, thank you if you are listening. All right, let's get started. It's a webinar on looking at the trends this week in technology and also the tips so you can have higher productivity and save lots of time. So the first thing is I am using today a $430 Chromebook because my rather expensive laptop, the MacBook, well, has given up. So challenge for you as a business owner is what happens if you use your primarily, dev primary device, if I can say the word, because it's been really a fascinating thing for me. So I have a Chromebook because I like to understand what different technology and how it works. So Chromebook is very common in schools. Businesses are starting to use them more and more now because they're just so quick. You don't need a big processor because they're light on, mem on uh, they don't chew up the power. So this has been my experience. First thing that I noticed is you need to have, I'll do the sharing of the screen, you need to have a good password manager because it was just a breeze for me to lose my main computer, which just hasn't started up. It's threatened to do that occasionally, but it was always generally going. And it's completely, of course, we're in lockdown, and so we're not going to have, well, no one can fix it. I've tried. So, last pass is a must have for purity. It means look after your passwords. And passwords are on your mobile phone. So you've got the app here and all the passwords are there or any device to log into. But the reason it's so good and it's better for security is, as well as being encrypted and all the good things, it allocates a unique password to every login. So you can make sure you're really secure. And best of all, it is free. So that's one we always recommend. I'm paying $3 a month to share passwords with the the virtual assistant and the rest of our team will log into some of our stuff, but free must, it's pretty much a must have. The other thing is using G Suite, a really interesting case talking to a client on Wednesday who is using Office 365 and they can't really run their business on an iPhone through Office 365 and they want to change from Android to iPhone. So G Suite means that when my system was down, I can run my whole business from here because the G Suite apps mean that they're just as good as a desktop. And that is the trend. If I had my regular computer, I'd show you the, what I've got set up here. I've got an iPad, I've got my big monitor there so that I've got screens so I can monitor Facebook. So let's look if there is any questions coming in. So the point is that the way the market is going, the processing power of a smartphone is about the same as an average laptop. So the trend in technology is that we're gonna soon see, as I've done here, just plug my iPad into a big screen and I've got the power of a desktop essentially. So Microsoft, if I was Microsoft, I'd be worried. They've specialized in desktops, they dropped their mobile, but there's gonna be a convergence. So we're all gonna start using this device. We get to our desk, we plug it in, have a keypad, and we have all the power why would we want multiple devices? So that's a trend, but it's important now that you can be prepared, have your business. Jeez, that's why Jesus is very good for that. You can run your business from your phone if everything goes down. The other thing is never type a game. We'll do a demonstration of this. With, I'm not that flash on the top. I'm gonna do standard, no, form three typing and I've just got the screen share is blocking my app to show you the screen I want to get into so let's go in here and open it up. All right so this is so powerful. I've got my Chromebook set up on a on a little rack so it sits up so I've got the right height generally here and so I can see it without bending over. So I don't have a keyboard. I have to go up here for a keyboard and my other keyboard doesn't work. So I've ordered one online, but it's gonna be Monday due to lockdown before I can get it. So I've been all day and I've so been loving this. I do it sometimes. I do use voice 
the type. So if I go into a document, this is G Suite and go there and hopefully the screen sharing is working. Could you perhaps put in chat if it's not? So, and let's just talk away. Talk about how amazing G Suite is for running your business and let's see what it types. Uses artificial intelligence and it actually analyzes the, what you've been using and some words you commonly use. And it is about, oh, this is where I'm writing my book. It is amazing. I actually found, if we look at the iPhone, and I'll go for, I'll shut that up. I'll stop sharing and just try a little demonstration of, on the iPhone, the power is also, amazing. Oh, it's the same with the Android. But if we do a little, um, little swap here, just testing using a different camera. So on the iPhone, if we go into on my regular computer, I can plug this in and actually show you live the screen share. But let's just go into, let's create a text message. And on here, if you can see it, the little microphone, I just go here. This technology is amazing. I love Apple and I love voice recognition. And you can see it's typing and it gets 98% right. It's just phenomenal. Why would you ever type again? And it's taken this for me to, I do it sometimes, but I'm just doing it all the time. And the best one, well, it's still typing and accuracy is phenomenal. And with, with the way AI is working, it's getting smarter and smarter, these algorithms, and it'll be it's perfect. So more, it's virtually perfect for writing a book. I just, each morning, blur, waffle away, and I'm, 98% fine, just pass it to an editor and just get it done. That's the key. So let's go back to this uh, camera and over, let's uh, look at another example of that. And this is, this is the best. I've been doing this this morning for email. It's a great feature. Right, let's get my screen share and go back to here. All right, so Let's go into inbox and I've gone through and made, made sure, whoops, almost did, that there wasn't any emails there. So I'm in the inbox now and I just go hit the microphone here and I just want to talk about, I love Gmail, I love G Suite and I love the beauty of this. What if I talk really quickly? If I talk really quickly, can I beat this thing? What if I start splurring my words? I've been having a few drinks. Yeah, I've managed to throw it out then. And it takes its time. It's sometimes a bit behind you because it is processing and linking together the words that are more likely to go together, being artificial intelligence. So you can just, it's amazing stuff, isn't it? So I was trying to beat it. So I've been doing my emails like this and text messages today. And boy, it saves me so much time. So that is my say, big time saver for today. All right. So last thing is no green screen. I have normally used green screen. If you're, if you're in the Facebook group, you see I use a green screen a lot. And it looks a bit tacky, some would say. But because I love the technology, I, I hang in there with it. But a big learning for me is, if I stop sharing, is when you come, I've got monitor ports, that's your TV on the wall here, and I can actually present here, and depending on which camera, that camera can zoom in, and I can actually use my PowerPoint here, whereas I've embedded it, I can embed it in picture on picture in the background on the other ones I'm using. So I've now got actually a real background and a real life thing that's not fake. So just another really interesting thing happened. I'm a big believer that everything happens for a reason if you look at what the learning is. So any challenges, there's always learning if you look for it. And that's been the key. All right, next thing, looking at, <laughs> I'm just looking at the chat. <laughs> yeah, if you say I love Apple, it doesn't, doesn't work better. I used, to, I used to talk to text often. 
All right, excellent. Well, great to have that comment. So next, we want to talk about the way the technology is going for connecting your data. Let's talk about another example. I was talking to somebody who their payroll had problems talking to IRD. So let's go to share again. So if we're looking at how it works, oh, let's use a different example. We've got to go here to get into a different screen. It's anyone that's familiar with Zoom on the Chromebook doesn't look like I can drag the, the icons at the top. So, all right. The whole idea is with payroll, you, if you're using a cloud-based payroll, like I use Xero for GST, and you just press a button for your GST receipt, and it's immediately the inland revenue. So this person I was talking to, he was having trouble because his system is on the PC. So the intelligence is on the PC. So it has a different technology. It has to then, I was going to say dial in, like the old type, and it then connects to the site. So it was less reliable because your the databases are, it's not as easy to communicate. Whereas if he was using, say, the Z, or that particular operator, that company he used, did have a cloud version, but he was older and didn't ever want to change. So the point is, if you move things to the cloud, everything's connected and your data's connected. We want to, and businesses, this is what we talk about, is get the strategy right for businesses. You stop emailing or typing data because you can connect it all. I mean, there's a few exceptions, like for that invoicing four invoices a month. We maybe don't connect zero to their CRM because it's copy and paste, but generally it's connecting all the data. So anything that's happening in CRM or project management, then it was all connected. So that's the key. This example here is you trying a different video editing because as soon as my Apple that I love has got iMovie, which is just so brilliant, it's really high quality. You can do green screen, picture in picture, and insert PowerPoints and all sorts of faces in your video and do wonderful stuff. So I trialed this, which is cloud-based, but totally in the cloud. Here was one of the lovely things. At the end, I mean, iMovie potentially can do this, but it's getting back to what I said about payroll. If it's on your computer, it's difficult to connect to other databases compared to if it's sitting in the cloud and they talk to each other via APIs. So after completing the video, here it gave me the, I'd edit it, and this was the one I did yesterday in our Facebook group. And then here it gives me options. It's integrated with Google Drive. So immediately you're not uploading files, you're not downloading files, it's just integrated. And this is the good thing. I can send it to YouTube and wherever else I want. Point being, now if you have everything in the cloud and just press a few buttons, bang, bang, it just really saves time. Another example of that, how everything is connected is on your phone, use, uh, use the phone for doing little videos for posting on LinkedIn. But the key thing is on your phone, upload it directly to YouTube. Bang, it's done. You can edit it on the phone. There's great free apps. Well, the iPhone has iMovie. Well, you don't even need it. The default native photo app on the iPhone actually edits it. So you can just clip it, put it straight in. And this is the key thing. I'm trying to um, allocate more to a virtual assistant, but I've been indoctrinated to just doing it myself, which is a, another challenge altogether. But the point being is you do it like that quickly and it's done. And then it, or it goes straight into, into Google Drive, which again is a, just a couple of presses and it's done in Google Drive. And then the virtual assistant then does the editing and uploads it and so forth. So it's just no manual or no uploading. And here's another pet hate is emailing documents because of the power of the cloud now, 
then it's we can't generally we can we don't want to be arguments and as long as first webinar two weeks ago on this then went on about it so if I've created this document then we don't want to email it to somebody we want to share it and so we just share it in the cloud and we put the email address in and then they can both everyone can comment no one needs to save it and attach it and unattach it and so forth so we've just got to get out of the way of emailing documents and it's the same with in your inbox then if we go back to my inbox then it is here when something comes into the inbox it is sending it off to once the, I can press this button and send it to Trello, which is our project management. So there's all our internal team, we use Slack. We actively make a point of not using email. Only thing we're using email for is calendar and some passwords that we want in a separate place. But I can send that and put it into, oh, it's all the different people there, put it into the different Trello and save it and bang, and it's out of the inbox. So. That is a key, everything's connected. Business needs to be set up in the cloud so it's all reliable and connected and that is the key. All right, let's go, I've just got two more topics. I want to talk about the new way of new business. It's new business rules around because everything's changing, not everything, but a lot of things are changing at the moment with the uncertainty in the business, but there is for a long time been some new rules of how you attract customers. And the fundamental is you don't sell anymore. If you position yourself right, you position yourself as the expert and you have a queue of customers and you have an application process that they have to apply to be clients for you. And how it works is if you're really driven by purpose and really clear about your purpose as a business, and then you are really clear about the value and positioning and you make yourself that real leader in the space, then that is the key to, or one of the keys. And I'm gonna show you an example of that. This is a business that live stream, it's for another project. The moment live streaming is obviously the go and very important for the, whoops, did I turn off screen sharing? A great way of putting out content is live streaming. And this is a service that is totally in the cloud and it's essentially a game changer rather than, and so it's really powerful. But if we look at the purpose, our vision is, is to empower more storytellers and grow the communities in which they, which they tell them. Anyway, I read that, I thought all of a sudden I was totally over all upon this. That's really, that's really great English, is it? But you know what I mean? So, and there's another one which is really good. It's an app on your phone for, for controlling your live streaming on your, on your device. And so the whole area there of live streaming that's powerful. So the point is that if I've got a question, all right, yeah, I'll come back to that question. Great question, thank you. All right, so the, lost my way a little bit. So, I'll check questions at the end maybe, but it's great, keep those questions coming in. All right, so the point is, if we're really driven by purpose, and this is really the key thing, and we're clear and set ourselves up as an expert, the tool that we use, or it's the tool that I developed years ago when I was an uh, executive coach, and is the one page plan, and I, Someone's asked for a demo, so it really fits well. It'll go through that now. How it works is the one-page business plan, the one-page strategy, you get really clear about your purpose, and that leads the content on your website, really your purpose, and you can build then, because if you understand Simon Sinek, then you start with the why, you capture people, and then you have a vision, reputation, and various different strategies here on your one-page business plan. 
the reason it works really well is that there's a one-page board. And last week in the webinar, I went into this in a lot of detail. And oh, this is not a complete one. I showed you our real one, which has got the social media tracking, and it's got the, all the KPIs of the real one that we use to, for our business. But here's the real power. Sure, you're tracking, you're tracking what creates your success here, then you're very likely to be successful. But here's one of the key things for building culture. The one-page plan, and particularly at the moment for remote working teams, it is a way of tracking the motivation of a team. So it's an individual page that everyone f works on. And I, I suppose I should have asked for permission, but there's a even PR agency in Auckland that the CEO is using this because he said he, he wants to take his business to the next level. And he said, to do that, I really want to develop the people. He's got a really successful business, successful culture. So how it works is, if we go to an example, is that each person in the business, they create a one-page plan. And here's an example, a made-up one. And whatever categories they choose, then there are the strategies and actions and the intention. The difference between strategies and action, or the difference between intentions and goals is an intention is a goal, but you detach from that being the only outcome. So you stay present. And because the shift is towards more intuitive business and the more trust and the, it's a whole other story again, then you review it and tune into the more intuitive or sixth sense here to get intentions. And it's fluid. You have to fill out with lots of logical data and head stuff. You tune into the emotions that drive it. It's our emotions that are the more sustainable motivation at, rather than living life as we're told in our head we needed to do such and such by a certain age, get a house by a certain age, and et cetera, et cetera. So how it works really well, and our team have, do it. So at our weekly meeting on a Monday, all the team, we've only just started it because we thought we'd better practice what we preach. And then so it worked really well last week because the three of the team went through their one-page plan and their goals, and it follows the philosophy that, if you really look to develop the people, then it is an important part of getting more out of your staff. So if we use the example of this tool, when I was training development 12 years ago, I used this tool for a leading, one of the leading training companies in Auckland as a sales training company that I was training management manager for. We found that this page, we got all the, on the start of a four day program, we got them all to do this and, and we found out eventually that they got so inspired by looking at their whole life balance because of their life balance wheel, here's a dream gap and various things, then that they actually ultimately got out of sales. So we actually stopped using it for here. But that's going back in time. How we, we on our website actually openly put, if we go to our team, actually openly put that the philosophy is, I want to develop all our team as much as we can. So if we go into, into here and look at our behaviours, work first, sorry, people first, work second, the core of being a team is to put people first. Anyway, I won't read it all, but the point is, I want to develop the person as an individual and I want to know what their dreams are and help them get to where they want to be, which is probably a different organization. But by focusing on the development of the person and using the one page plan, and everyone talking about it in our weekly meeting, we get to know the people, we build up this chemistry and understanding around people. And it's really the key to building motivation of people because at the moment with everyone in a remote work situation, not everybody, it's about intrinsic motivation. So the few things for intrinsic motivation you need, a vision and a purpose are the emotions that ignite and excite people. And it's also then the leader, and I've been learning, because I've got a team of eight, but they were really part-time and not doing much because I was sort of still doing everything a lot of the time. But with it all up down, they've, uh, the part-time has become full-time and I've really had to allocate and I've been learning a lot of things from when I was a leadership trainer that I been applying and things like giving people responsibility. They've got to just do it because one particular example, an operations manager came back with a 
something which was completely not what I was thinking, but I didn't actually explain the situation properly and give him responsibility for just going and doing it. So it's critical for remote teams to have that motivation, communicate every day, do a stand up or and the leader listening because people know that you care about them by the degree to which you listen, whether that be a parent or a leader. The more present and you listen to people, then they feel loved. So as leaders, we have to be communicating and listening. And I certainly aren't always very regular on that. So that is how the one page plan works to get intrinsic motivation driving people. And because they all share, if we go to the to the one page, oh it's just on the left a little bit more ago. If we go to I mean there's all sorts of different worksheets here for business planning, which I won't go into, but if we go back to strategy, if the they all get buy into what the vision and the purpose of the business is, then they're driven, they get out of bed in the morning to impact and do something in the company. And so this is why the one-page strategy is the fundamental of motivation. All right, so on to the last things before I go to any questions. Video content creation. So this is potentially quite a big one, but at the moment with more people doing Go to the top here. If more people are doing, more people are building online courses, and so it's simple to do an online course. The previous video is all about you just use free ser free service to start an online course, and you then can sell it before you've actually built more than the first week. So this business, the same business, but it's the, the team in digital communities, which is e-learning, specialised in e-learning, then one of the fundamental things is that the best way of creating your content is to use a PowerPoint. And so in, in here it is, oh, I won't demonstrate. So basically PowerPoint, export it into a file. PowerPoint does that by itself or you can use screen capture software. I use Dub, which is amazing because it just sits as a Chrome extension. You can see all the videos that I've done here and you can embed it. You can turn on the webcam, turn it off. You can do all these different things and it is amazing. So it is, that's a fun and simple one. And so a lot of people have the PowerPoint slides already. So they just use a voice over is what I should have explained. And then with the voiceover, it means then that it can menu export into a video. And if we go to the top of our site, our tech stack is what I just clicked on. It actually has here a list of the, all the technology we use essentially. And the other one, the next one is smartphone. If, um, if we go down to that strange character, artificial intelligence and voice stuff there, and Chrome extensions like the must have is an ad blocker for YouTube, so you don't get any ads on YouTube, and team communication, we use Slack, and yeah, so there's a link here to a discount for Dub if you want to use the, well, the free, at the moment the free version is fine for Dub, the video platform. Show. Anyway, I'll, I'll move on. We've got the links there on our site so you can find Dub the video platform. All right. And so using the smartphone, you set it up on a tripod, which I've been using all the time, and then it record it and then upload it to Google Drive or your, where are you going to host it immediately so you're not mucking around. It's just got to be quick and efficient. And that's an easy way of creating content as well. Also, and when you're doing this, you can also do some really powerful things of picture in picture, which is, let's see if I can see which one is. Yeah, picture in picture is an easy thing to do for any video editing software. So you can record your video by using this webcam or this webcam or your phone 
and then you can add PowerPoint slides in. And it's easy to do open shop software or .org as a open source, so it's free, and that's comparable to the top paid video editing. So that is the way if you're by yourself and you don't want to collaborate with a team, you may want to use that. Or I'm a big believer, as I'm saying, on collecting it and connecting it in the cloud and having everything linked. But it's a really good option. And I've showed you the other one that I've been using. There's a few that I'm still testing that I'll do updates on in future posts. Another one is the casting style. Before while, I, while this loads, I'll actually go into the software that I talked of. That is very good if you're doing an online program, it's all in the cloud. If you go to the pricing, it is you can have a few people working on it. So you can have your virtual assistant say processing it all and uploading it. You just send it all there and it all you can share it and that's a great option. The last one is and I'm just uh, done with this, but to me the voice is slowing down a bit. So if we go here to our blog on on and just show you the last thing. Look at some ideas for doing cartoons for your content. So this is they're great for sale. Cartoons or doodles are great for for sales letters or I mean most probably people wouldn't want a cartoon. All right, let's not bore you with that. So the other one is Doodle. So we've got the software for doing this. It's not very expensive if you want to do it, do this and create some sales letters. This might be a magical magician couple. They had amazing following. Numbers were best until one day after a show, they were rude and arrogant. Life would never be the same. The next day, it's all right. I won't bore you with it anymore. And here's an example of, this is an old video, of just a PowerPoint. And you get really good, quite good animated PowerPoints, which I've no, there's no other music. So you get these PowerPoints that are pre-made and you just add the words and do. So there's our content for today on Creating content is that last but so it doesn't need to be complicated, but the thing is with a course the same as with your business, your one page strategy is if you're really clear about your purpose, you define the outcomes of a course and then you just start building it. And then it's um, sell the first week and then build it week by week after you've sold the first week and then just get it out there. So that's it, apart from we had a, let's see, go back to a question and so, oh, great question. So do you have any security concerns integrating apps online? I don't personally, and there is some people that do. I figure that, well, maybe I'm too naive, but I, while we're on that, a couple of really critical things that you need to do for security, if we go to your inbox, is you need to make sure you've got two-factor ID set on here. What that is, it means that when you 
I don't think I'm sharing the screen, am I? All right, so let's not be sharing the screen. Then let's go over. So basically how it works is whenever we log into email, then, and we stay logged in all the time normally, whenever you log in, then it asks you for a code and there's a lot of different two-factor IDs that either send a text to you, or the one I love is called Analytica. So whenever you log into only a few of the key things, you ask for this code and you just boom, the code's in. The reason you need something like this for your email, not so bothered about the other apps, is that for your email, if somebody gets in there, then they can actually do a reset, search through your history of all the things you've logged into and do a password reset, and then they have control of your life, basically. So that's why email has to have two-factor ID, and I've got uh, a lot of them set up like that just because it's so easy. And when I've normally got my Mac from the iPhone, I can copy it there and paste it. It's one of the best features of a Mac that I am actually missing, even though I've learned some amazing things and I'm going to persist with just using the Chromebook rather than getting a new Mac for it. Well, I can't, well, I could, but it's, I locked it. It's going to be a week before it gets here, so I might as well wait so I can go and pick it up next week. So we'll hang in there for about a week. So that is, all right, so thanks for the question. Better go back to my other camera because one of the fundamental things as I said in yesterday's video for YouTube Live or anything, making sure you're looking at the camera. And actually, I'm, the camera should have been a bit higher, maybe. But anyway, so good tip on two-factor ID. Thank you for that comment. All right, any more questions? That's my weekly update on what's happening and some tech ideas to help your business productivity. So if there's no more questions, I'll say thank you for tuning in. And... Hope you have a magical Friday and we look forward to seeing you next Friday at 3 o'clock New Zealand time if you want to dial in. Thanks, everybody.